What's up, everyone? Tara Roberts here with Fantasy Alarm, and we're talking free agency deep cuts for week 16. Minshew Mania is here, and I am so excited for it. And there's really no surprises here. Minshew is a very you-get-what-you-expect kind of guy. He's had a few rough starts in the past, but for the most part, he fills in very admirably where he gets anywhere from 16 to 24 fantasy points. Upside isn't extremely high, but when you consider the other options on waivers, he is definitely one of the more stable option compared to guys like Tyler Huntley, Davis Mills, and Malik Willis. And the Eagles face Dallas. The Cowboys defense has been very strong throughout the season, but they're a little bit banged up right now and they're going through a rough patch. If you need a deep option at quarterback, Minshew is your guy. At running back, everyone rushed out to waivers to grab Zach Moss, and I don't blame them. Moss saw the bulk of carries last week, and Deion Jackson fumbled the ball and appeared to fall out of favor with Indianapolis, but do not count Jackson out. This backfield will likely operate as a committee, and Jackson is in fact the better back. He also has receiving upside as shown by his week six performance, where he caught all 10 of his targets for 79 yards. I favored Moss on my earlier waiver wire list, but after the Colts announced that they are benching Matt Ryan in favor of Nick Foles, I started leaning more towards Jackson as the higher upside option. The Chargers are an excellent matchup for running backs, and really both Moss and Jackson are viable options. You can also look at Jalen Warren this week. For a while, we thought Warren might be creeping up to split the backfield, but he got injured and Najee Harris gained control of the backfield again. But this week, the Steelers face Las Vegas, an extremely juicy matchup for running backs. If the Steelers focus heavily on their ground game, Warren could see enough work to repeat his double-digit fantasy point performance from last week. He saw 11 carries, 38 yards, and a touchdown. He's a very interesting deep league option. At wide receiver, you can look at Demarcus Robinson. Robinson is not exactly a high upside option. Dever DuVernay is out for the year, and Robinson is the clear wide receiver one now. The problem is that the role isn't exactly a high volume role. Being the wide receiver one of this offense doesn't really mean much. His targets will likely be strong, but the yardage is going to be limited. He is a low end flex option unless he can find the end zone to help push him over 15 fantasy points. The Ravens will likely push aggressive volume on the ground with Dobbins and Edwards, and they should be able to move the ball pretty well. So the opportunities will be there. Robinson just has to cash in on them. You could do a lot worse. Now let's talk about a two for one special. Isaiah Hodgins and Richie James for New York. Darius Slayton is the preferred option for fantasy managers, but Hodgins and James offer some upside as well. Last week was a poor performance from pretty much the entire Giants team, but that was a very tough matchup. And this week, the Giants faced Minnesota. And while this is still a run first team, Brian Dayball is a good coach, and he will see that the best way to exploit Minnesota is through the air. The Giants defense is also struggling significantly. It's going to be extremely tough for them to stop Justin Jefferson, and the Giants will likely be chasing points to catch up. If you are going to lean towards one, I would probably lean towards James, but I think they're both fine options. And speaking of Minnesota, I hate to chase points, but when the matchup is against a team that is reeling with defensive injuries that we just talked about, I will chase the points. And this week we are chasing the points with KJ Osborne. Now, I don't really expect the same level of performance out of him. That was kind of insane. 10 receptions, 16 targets, 157 yards, one touchdown. That's not exactly repeatable for the third receiving option in an offense, but he should still put up a strong performance and he's had a touchdown in back-to-back -back weeks. He's no stranger to having boom games. Given the matchup, I feel like we can lean towards Osborne again. And at tight end, we are going to go with an option whose inconsistency is absolutely driving me insane. Kate Otten. Anytime Otten is actually given the opportunity to succeed, he thrives. He's had multiple solid weeks and he is a touchdown threat. Otten is coming off a performance of just one reception, one reception on one target for 20 yards. That's unacceptable. But that was against Cincinnati. This week he faces Arizona. Arizona is the best matchup, the best matchup for tight ends. I am sending out an SOS to Tampa Bay that they realize Cameron Brink ain't it. Stop it. Cade Otten should be given 80 plus percent of snaps and allow him to thrive because when he gets that opportunity, he does. 
So let's lock him down and use him this week. That is my passionate plea. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to Fantasy Alarm and come back next week for another round of deep cuts.